So welcome everybody. My uh, name is Victor Boulain, uh, Director of uh, Customer Implementations, as Holly said earlier. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is um, I'm going to start with a quick introduction and then uh, look at some of the concepts behind 5D BIM. Uh, go through a couple of examples, project examples for design phase, construction phase, and production phase support, and finally uh, summarize some of our services offerings that we offer uh, to the industry to get started with 5D BIM as quickly as possible. So a little bit about Vico for uh, those of you who are um, listening in or just for the first time with us. Um, we are uh, a global solution provider of 5D technology. Uh, we develop software for model-based estimating and model-based scheduling. Uh, we also provide project and implementation services. We typically work with owners, general contractors, and construction managers. We are basically our largest uh, beta testers. So we use the products that we develop and sell. So to use a software terminology uh, to translate it for you, basically we eat our own dog food. And that forces us to create a software and a process that works for everyone in the industry. And uh, we beta test and test all of our products using our services group before we make it available to the market. This allows us to capture processes and best practices and make it available to our clients as part of the knowledge transfer when they implement 5D BIM processes. So let's take a closer look at what those processes are. As I said earlier, we provide software and services for the entire life cycle of the project, starting with the design phase, when uh, you collaborate with uh, designers and architects, engineers, uh, continuing on with the construction phase, when you start coordinating with subcontractors, and finally, for tracking and monitoring the project on the field, when you start building the building on site with, uh, with your subcontractors and with your field personnel. Some of the benefits uh, that this technology aims to provide are, are listed here. Basically, we aim to reduce risk for the owner, for the general contractor, and increase productivity for the general contractor and the subcontractors. And risk reduction sometimes is reflected in savings in contingency or ex exceeding standard of care, again, reducing owner's contingency, and uh, increase in productivity is typically reflected in reduced labor hours, continuous flow, and um, just a more predictable flow of the project on site, which results in uh, reduced claims and um, less change orders on site as well. The concept behind 5D BIM is, is very simple. Uh, you can see these two simple equations that represent how an estimate and a schedule is created. On the top, you can see cost typically is broken down by quantity, unit cost, and uh, subcontractors or the general contractor as the markup, that becomes your estimate. And a schedule is broken down typically by quantity, production rate, you know, the amount of drywall you have to install, the number of people, the crew size that you're going to have available to install it, and the location, you know, where they need to install it. And that gives you your schedule. However, most general contractors typically just look at the cost side and the schedule side and they leave up the, the detail work to the subcontractor to figure out you know, the, the actual cost and the actual accuracy of the schedule. When you have a model and when you create this building model, building information model, as a general contractor, you have access to a lot more information about the project. You have access to the quantities and you have access so the quantity is broken down by locations. That means that you, you have the ability to get a better handle on the subcontractor's scope, a better handle on the subcontractor's bid, and negotiate with them not necessarily about the scope and the, and the quantities, but just the unit cost and the markup, or when you look at the schedule, negotiate with them about production rate, how many people they're going to have on site and when, as opposed to start and end date which um, are very hard to predict if you don't have these, this very detailed breakdown behind it. So the 5D technology really gives you this information matrix that allows you to generate all the quantities from the model, break it down by location, and create an accurate estimate and create an accurate schedule as you 
go through the pre-construction phase and start monitoring the pro process. The 5D workflow starts with a, uh, a 3D model or a, a BIM model. And um, mind you that not all BIM models are created equal. And the VCO workflow, you start with a BIM model, but the I in BIM really doesn't have a meaning at that point. The information is not there yet. So what VCO does is connect a knowledge base that extends the building information model with uh, cost and time information. So in this example, you can see that the geometry and the volumetric information comes from the model. That, that's linked to the knowledge base. The knowledge base is broken down by steps, by basically the activities that you use to build that component. In this case, you have reinforcement, formwork, concrete, surface finish, and cladding that allows you to roll up the costs for these different activities. And if you, for example, self-perform concrete, then you have the ability to break down one of these methods even further for, you know, and, and include material, labor, and equipment uh, rates in, in your knowledge base. So this process allows you to add all this information to the model and capture it because not every single project is kind of different, but the components are very similar. So you're going to build the columns, the concrete columns on every single project in a similar way. You're going to build a foundation in a similar way, and that's what you capture in this knowledge base. So once you have that information linked to the model, then you can divide up the uh, model per zones, as you can see it here on the right side. And here in, in this example, we have a red, blue, and a green zone. Every single element in these zones know the exact amount of concrete, for example, that needs to be poured to build these columns in area A, B, and C. And uh, that will allow you the quantity and the location information that will allow you to generate a schedule that's accurate because you only have to add the amount of field crew and the amount of people that will actually be needed to build these components on site. And that's captured finally in a, in a schedule that understands locations and understands productivity rates and understands quantities. This life cycle, this workflow allows you to up, make changes and update the model, the estimate, and the schedule any time during the, pro during the construction and pre-construction phase and make sure that all deliverables, estimate, schedule, and, and the design stays in sync for the entire life cycle of the, uh, of the process. So let's start with some of the uh, design phase benefits. Typically, the low-hanging fruit is 3D coordination. A lot of companies already use building information models to coordinate different trades in uh, three dimensions. And uh, most companies actually call BIM, when they say that we use BIM, they mean typically 3D coordination. They coordinate three trades uh, using, using this uh, information. However, in the VCO process, you also add the ability to manage cost, to set targets for your cost, and value engineering becomes a different term. Today, value engineering means that you have the design and then you rip out the, uh, the valuable parts and uh, that's how you reduce the cost of the, of the project. However, when you have an integrated system that allows you to monitor costs and changes throughout the life cycle of the design phase, then value engineering really becomes uh, a value to the owner and value to the team. So let's start with a couple of examples for uh, 3D coordination.